Hi everyone, my name is Heather Wallace, class of 1994, and I wanted to talk about my own experience of going to college and getting into the workforce and kind of my thoughts about that and things I might change, things I might do differently. And my experience was that my parents really wanted me to go to a four-year school and I really felt like that was what was encouraged in high school. And so I ended up going to the University of San Diego for a couple years and then transferred up to the University of Washington. And I was planning on going into sports broadcasting. So I did an internship at Como 4 News and actually decided I really didn't wanna do that as a career. And so I graduated from the UW with a degree in communications and then sort of flailed around doing odd sort of jobs for a while. Um, and eventually got into the building industry, which is funny because that's the industry my dad um, is in and I grew up kind of knowing a lot about. And once I got into that, I was doing a lot of media and writing, which I love doing. Um, also some photography, which I love doing. And then it kind of led me into realizing that I just kind of wanted to work for myself. And so that's what I've been doing for about the last decade. Um, freelancing and working for myself. I work for about five or six different companies doing a lot of interesting things. I've been able to travel around the world on other people's dimes um, doing writing and really interesting things. Um, I don't know that I would have needed a college education to do what I'm doing now. It didn't hurt, um, but the cost of education is pretty steep right now. So I think for the purpose of this video and what we're doing, is we really want kids to be able to explore options and what it takes to do the things that you're passionate about. Um, and you know, if you have a really, your heart set on being a doctor or something like that, please go to college because we would like you to know how to do that when you're doing surgery on us. But otherwise there's some pathways I think um, and career choices that are really open. And these days there's, you can pretty much make your own job up these days. Um, and whether you wanna get into entrepreneurship or work for somebody else or work as a team, there's just so many options. Um, and so I would be more than happy to talk to you about kind of my own, own experience. I'd love to introduce you to anybody that's on my network. If you're on LinkedIn, go and connect with me there. I'd love to connect with you um, and reach out anytime because I would love to answer questions. Hi there, I'm Jessie Gudgel and I'm going to share a little bit about my life after Orcas High School. Um, I went to the University of Oregon and I studied Family and Human Services. Um, originally, I considered studying medicine or something in the sciences, health sciences, but I decided to go with um, the degree and major I did because it gave me a lot of opportunity for working in the community there and working with um, vulnerable populations, I was able to work um, at a few different clinics and um, with some houseless people. And I worked for Lane County WIC, um, Women, Infants and Children, which receive, um, through the government, they receive uh, benefits that give them the opportunity to purchase food and nutritious items. Um, that was a really powerful experience. So I really enjoyed my time there and I'm really grateful for all of the um, in-person internships I was able to do through that major. Um, studying abroad also gave me a lot of cultural perspective and made me really want to further pursue um, living abroad more long-term, which is part of what inspired me to do the Peace Corps. Um, right after college, I joined the Peace Corps. I lived in a rural community in the Amazon jungle region of Peru for just over two years. And there I was working in community health, primarily with uh, women with children under the age of three, as well as with teenagers um, in a sex ed class in the high school. Um, I did nutritional education sessions with these families uh, mothers and fathers and older siblings that were taking care of infants and toddlers in their homes. Um, we talked about early childhood stimulation, balanced meals, uh, breastfeeding, introduction of foods, prevention of anemia, prevention of chronic malnutrition, uh, prevention of diarrheal infections and upper respiratory infections. 
and I um, helped out in the clinic while I was there with immunizations and different educational sessions with the families in my community. That was also a very powerful experience. I know it sounds cliche, but probably to me, one of the most impactful things you can do living abroad for years at a time in a rural um, community. I would recommend the Peace Corps to anyone. I wish it was more common for people to join the Peace Corps because it really gives you opportunities to uh, learn more about yourself and learn more about the world around you. So I'm really grateful for that experience. Um, after that, I got my CNA, Certified Nursing Assistant. I'm now pursuing a degree in nursing, hoping to work in pediatrics or maternal and child health um, in a public health setting long term. So I'm currently taking classes online to pursue that degree and I'll be moving out to the East Coast this summer for clinicals. Um, so that's a little bit about me and my history after leaving Orcas High School and looking forward to the future. And I really hope that other alumni from Orcas are inspired by our community and our sense of service and care for one another to get out in the world and learn more about what we can do to serve others. Um, one piece of advice I'd like to leave you with is that if you ever have the opportunity to get out of your comfort zone, do it. Um, it's easy to just stay around the island, the Northwest our whole lives, and not everyone has the opportunities to leave. And I understand um, that. And we're so fortunate to live in such a beautiful place. But if you ever get the opportunity, try to get out there and see what the world has to offer. Um, it will teach you so much about yourself and your family and the environment you grew up in and all the different cultures around the world, how different they are and unique and how important it is to educate ourselves and learn more to be better citizens of the world. So good luck and I hope that you are able to do something that makes you feel fulfilled and that you're passionate about. Thank you, bye. You can never know what it's like Your blood like when it freezes just like ice And there's a cold and lonely light that shines from you You wind up like the wreck you hide Hi, my name is Jeremiah Bodden, and I'm an Orcas Island High School alumnus from the class of 1994. I uh, grew up and went to school with Heather Wallace and graduated with her as well. And I was asked to put together this video to basically uh, give a glimpse of my non-traditional route as far as college and my career path. Um, when I was attending high school at Orcas Island, I really wanted to go to college. Um, really, really wanted to go. My uh, folks couldn't afford it. And I really thought about my options, whether it was going to college, enlisting, um, just really trying to find a way to basically move off the island, pay for rent or live in a dorm, um, also pay my way through college. And it just became so difficult the closer it came to graduation day to really try and find a way uh, so that I could go to college. So basically, instead of going to college straight out of high school, I moved to Salt Lake City. Um, the goal was really just to, to be near some family and also just kind of be a snowboard and ski bum um, and just try and figure out what my options were gonna be after high school. Uh, I was fortunate enough while living in Salt Lake City to uh, come into uh, an internship. Uh, really, uh, it was more than just an internship. It turned into an apprenticeship um, with my climbing buddy. Uh, he worked and his brother worked and also his dad worked at this company in Salt Lake City that specialized in uh, welding glass uh, for the semiconductor industry. Um, and so I was really fortunate to luck into that position. I worked there for a couple of years, uh, really just living, living the dream, um, renting a large house with my climbing partner uh, and his brother, working together, um, learning from a lot of guys who were from the former Soviet bloc uh, and just how to weld glass and work in the semiconductor industry. And we just had a really nice house at the base of Little Cottonwood Canyon and we would ski and snowboard pretty much every day. Um, but I always wanted to go to college. And so I really thought about my options and, and kind of several years of kind of living on my own and what that would look like. And I moved back to the Pacific Northwest, um, 
when I was in high school, I really wanted to attend the University of Oregon. And so I quit my job and my apprenticeship and basically picked everything up and moved back to the Northwest and moved to Eugene and then worked in the service industries pretty much from then until moving up to Portland. And during that time, um, I took classes at both Lane Community College and Portland Community College to really just try and get at least my associate's degree. Um, and so basically I paid my way through that, um, just kind of, you know, bartending and, and doing jobs and saving money. And then <clears throat> once I moved up to Portland from Eugene, I basically had my associate's degree in hand. Um, and so this would have been in my mid twenties. And then I attended Portland State University. And uh, I was always really interested in science, but before that, before transferring to Portland State, um, I was convinced that I was gonna get an anthropology degree. And once I came to Portland State and just kind of got a sense for the environmental, um, both environmental careers and just kind of environmental work that was out there specifically in Portland in a larger city, um, I kind of reverted to one of my, you know, loves, which was science. And I had always really enjoyed science and um, I was really fortunate to have a great science teacher at Orcas Island, Orcas Island High School that just fostered that love. Um, and his name was Mr. McKinney. And I really owe what I end up, uh, ended up doing and what I do now to really just that man. Um, he proved, you know, that you could do something that you loved. And he also proved that no matter what your challenges in life are, that you, and no matter when those challenges are, that you can basically step up and kind of pursue a dream and accomplish it. Um, so I, declared that I was going to be uh, basically a science major focusing in environmental sciences. Um, I ended up becoming the first person in my family to get a college degree uh, when I graduated in 2004. So basically 10 years after leaving Orcas Island High School. I got my Bachelor of Science from Portland State University uh, from the Geography Department, but my focus was primarily in environmental science a discipline called biogeography and geographic information systems. Um, and during that time, I was also really fortunate that I recognized that I also had a paid internship during my junior and senior years of college with the city of Portland at the Bureau of Environmental Services. And that is the local sewer bureau. Um, primarily, they maintain the sewer infrastructure for the Seattle or for the Portland metro area, sorry. And they also have a mission statement to protect the built and natural resources around the city of Portland, including the streams and the riparian corridors and the species that call this area home. And during that time with my paint internship, um, I definitely knew, you know, that I wanted to go into uh, the environmental field. And so once I obtained my degree in 2004, I was a consultant. Um, for a consulting firm here in the Northwest and primarily um, working for the or Oregon Department of Transportation and helping them purchase and facilitate and manage mitigation banks here in the Northwest. Um, and I love that job, but I traveled a lot. And shortly before my first son was born, I decided to leave the private sector and go back to the public sector. And I was fortunate enough to get a job offer back with the city of Portland. Uh, in a group called Field Operations, also in Environmental Services for the same bureau I had been an intern for. And primarily what we do is we do all the uh, environmental sampling and monitoring for the city. So we're basically an internal uh, consulting firm. And I love my job. Um, I love what I've been able to accomplish as a public sector uh, employee, both giving back to uh, the people who basically, you know, I serve and also having measurable um, differences that I've made in the built environment and protecting natural resources. And I love my job. I'm outside every single day. Uh, every single day I'm doing something different. So we are all cross trained. We are all from different disciplines. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely did not go the normal route uh, straight out of high school. Uh, I was hired in 2005 almost 2006 back with the city of Portland and I've worked there ever since and I love what I do 
and I love that kind of work-life uh, balance that uh, the city uh, in particular has been able to offer me. I've been at every game, uh, every soccer game that both of my boys have played and followed their soccer careers. Um, and recently I've been able to, you know, work from home and also help them with distance learning um, and also maintain, you know, my certifications and work in the field with my colleagues at the same time. And this has been instrumental in being able to make it through COVID, uh, personal divorce, um, and other issues that have, you know, impacted everybody over the last year. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to be there and answer any questions. I definitely uh, think that if college is something that you want to do, that it's not on any particular timeline, that you can just follow what works best for you um, in the given situation. And uh, happy to answer any questions, happy to continue to facilitate uh, anybody's dreams. Um, I really enjoy what I do, and I've also maintained for the last six or seven years working with our local uh, Roosevelt High School that's also near my laboratory here in Portland, uh, which is my base of observation, obser <laughs> my base. So uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. I hope these answer questions, and good luck. The rig you hide behind that mask you use. And did you think this fool could never win? Well, look at me, I'm coming back again. Hello, my name is Bridget Ermentrout, and I graduated from Orcas Island High School in 2014. I went and did my undergraduate degree at Princeton University in New Jersey. At Orcas High School, I always really enjoyed history and languages and literature. And I greatly enjoyed Val Heller's AP European History course. And so when I went to Princeton, I thought I wanted to do more of the same. And I actually started out thinking I might want to do Russian. And I took about a term of Russian and it was fun, but I'd also started doing Old English and Latin and decided that I really liked dead languages. Uh, I also enjoy living languages and have studied several more of those, but dead languages became my passion and I decided to major in classics and minor in medieval studies. So when I was little, I had loved reading Greek mythology. My parents gave me this big book of Greek myths with illustrations. It was really pitched more at kids than at adults, but I loved the stories immediately. And I also really enjoyed Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. So in college, I took a lot of language classes. I learned ancient Greek and Latin and Coptic, which is the latest stage of ancient Egyptian spoken kind of late antiquity as Egypt is becoming Christian. And it's still the language of the Coptic Christian church. And I learned old Irish, which became one of my favorite languages. And I went to Cambridge to study abroad for about half a year in their department of Anglo-Saxon, Norse, and Celtic. And I did more Old Irish and I did paleography, which is the study of old manuscripts and old handwriting. And I decided that I liked this so much that I went back for a master's, or they call it an MPhil degree, and I'm currently about halfway through my PhD in the same department working on medieval Irish literature. So I look at how medieval Irish scribes and authors take classical texts, mostly Latin texts, uh, things like Virgil's Aeneid or Statius or Ovid or Lucan and what they do with gods in those texts and how their depictions of these classical deities might be influencing how they depict their own pre-Christian past. Because by the time the texts I'm looking at were written, Ireland has been Christian for a while. This is sort of 10th through 12th century texts. And no one writing these texts in monasteries or in monastically trained schools has been pagan or has seen an actual druid practicing paganism for centuries. So the question I'm asking is, do they know what polytheism, what paganism looks like? Or are they modeling it partly on examples in the Bible or examples from classical literature? So, so far I'm very happy doing this. I've been in England for the last three years or so. I've been staying here through the pandemic and I'd love to continue and go on into academia or at least go on into an academic adjacent field, maybe something like manuscript curation or library sciences, something of that nature, maybe publishing. And I just wanted to say that it's very possible to come from Orcas Island High School and to develop passions or interests you have in high school and go to some very good universities and be interested in academia. 
And if anyone's interested in talking about colleges or talking about possible careers in academia or related fields, I'd love to talk about it, love to be in touch. And I just want to say, I think I got a decent amount out of Orcas Island High School, and I think it's very possible to go further and go to the other side of the country or even go and live in a different country for a while with that background. Thank you very much. Love in a simple way, and if you need to know while I'm still standing, you just fade away. Don't you know I'm still standing? Better than I ever. Hi there. I'm Miles Harlow, and I graduated in the class of 2017 with Bethany Hansen, who's asked me to um, tell a little of my story from then until now, and hopefully someone can take something from it. I did all K through 12 um, of my schooling at Orcas Public Schools, and always had a really good experience, always was a kid that wanted to be at school, wanted to be involved in everything, um, usually spent very long hours on campus, before school, after school. And so yeah, school was my structure. I had a lot of it um, and I loved it, all of high school. And naturally I think that made me only really consider going to college as the next natural step. So that's what I did. I went to the University of Puget Sound down in Tacoma I played um, a year of collegiate football at the D3 level. Uh, I did a semester of school, then I came back for Christmas break, and then I very quickly decided I didn't want to be there anymore, um, and I dropped out. And I think that surprised a lot of people. Um, they wanted to know what went wrong or, you know, why I didn't like it. And honestly, I never had a good answer for him. I still don't. I still stumble over my words when I try to explain it to people. But basically, I had just kind of got that taste of freedom for the first time, um, being 18 and living away from home and um, just having that little, even in college, I, even as an athlete, I still felt like I had more free time than I did in high school. And I think I just got um, got really excited about all the other possibilities of life and all the other things I could do. And the biggest hassle just seemed like it was coming back to my classes or coming back at these certain times for certain things um, when I wanted to kind of just be in total control of every hour of my life. I dropped out, I bought a canopy for my truck, I kind of built it out a little bit, and I went and lived in my truck and traveled around um, the West Coast for a little bit, um, mostly all alone, and um, eventually traveled again with some more friends this time, and then everything kind of changed after they left and I was out in Colorado and kind of at a crossroads where I really wasn't sure what I wanted to put my energy and focus into next. Um, and that was when I met Alyssa on Tinder and I convinced her to come travel with me in my truck. Eventually we left and we kept um, traveling. We did the South. Um, we rented a place in North Carolina for a little while and eventually of course I had always planned to take her back to Orcas so she could see that part of my life. Um, we did that. I went back to working for my dad. She got a job at the local co-op in town and we did that for a while. We spent um, the longest while on Orcas that I had since uh, leaving college and we eventually um, decided we wanted to travel more and do it in a different fashion. Um, we got a van and tried to do the whole thing again, kinda, uh, which was hard to recreate. That stint of traveling was a little shorter and then we wanted a place of our own, so we rented a little place out in Olga um, through the winter and then it turned to 2020 
and I had my 21st birthday in February. Um, and I had really been wanting to move up to Bellingham, be closer to my friends, um, just be in a new place. It was hard to convince Alyssa, but we eventually, um, I was able to. Anyway, we got up to Bellingham. Um, we rented a cool old apartment um, near campus. I started working for a tree service up there. Yeah, then COVID hit and we lived in Bellingham and we'd been living really cheap and kind of bumming it and just trying, trying to live, trying to do life as easily and um, calmly as possible. But we also had this little obsession um, with collecting clothes that had gone on for as long as we knew each other and for me a while longer, um, starting with my mom. And we'd been collecting cool old vintage clothes, things worth money, stuff like that. We tried selling them in, we would just pop up in a little park by campus and we started having these little sales and um, we would really only be selling to people that happen to see us on the street walking by or dog walkers or park goers or um, students that could see us from their porch and stuff like that. So we would have these little pop-ups, we'd bring out all our clothes, we sl slowly started getting a little better at it, we'd buy some racks or some nice blankets to lay stuff down on. Um, but we loved finding it and we loved that part of it and it seemed like people were actually buying it and people took a liking to what we had and our style. And it was something we had tried to do online before but just never really liked enough um, because you know, you're looking at your phone and trying to describe clothes online and it was, it was just not fun for us in the same way that selling in the park was. Um, we would just always had a great time, met really cool people. But eventually it got colder. Um, we did like eight or nine of them through the summer and the fall. I think we went all the way into like late October. Then we decided what if we really, you know, tried to push, how can we push these clothes to more and more people? How can more and more people see our clothes? Uh, we know we have good stuff. We know we can keep getting good stuff. We know we're confident in our abilities to find. Um, we just need, you know, kind of an outlet to be able to sell a lot of stuff to a lot of people. Um, so we started a thrift store and that is where we're at. And that's the gist of it. Um, now we're sitting in Everett getting more clothes for our thrift store. And I do this full time now. Um, we opened on the first of this year. Um, and that is all. Still standing, you just fade away. Don't you know I'm still standing better than I ever did. Looking like a two Hi, I'm Eric Youngren. I graduated from Orcus in 1988. I went away to school. After high school, I went to Pomona College down in Claremont, California, where I studied anthropology. I did a study abroad semester my junior year, which was a great experience, living with a family and, and speaking the language in Nepal. I lived with a family just outside of Kathmandu and had a lot of incredible cultural experiences and that was where I first saw people living without electricity and living with kerosene lights and candles and matches to just get through the darkness every day and I also saw remote hydroelectric systems that provided lights and power to villages deep in the mountains where all the other villages nearby had no lights at all and one village was all lit up with electricity and uh, that really piqued my interest and uh, I think one of the 
the themes of my career, if I look back on things, it was personal interests that I was able to turn into a way to make a living. Uh, after school, I ended up back here and uh, got into sea kayaking. Started guiding with Shearwater, and uh, that led to me becoming an instructor with the National Outdoor Leadership School, which is a wilderness expedition and leadership skill training program based in Lander, Wyoming, but with branch schools all over the world. And at Knowles in Mexico, in Baja, California, I worked there for a while in town uh, doing kind of mechanical and maintenance stuff and driving and helping out. And that's where I saw solar electric technology for the first time. They had a off-grid battery-based system down there that ra ran the whole branch campus with the office and the kitchen and that kind of stuff. And uh, that started a fascination with, with solar power in particular and ended up back here on the island and saw a solar electric company down on the dock in West Sound Marina. Went in and introduced myself and eventually started working for that company after a few months. And uh, so I was able to really dive into this technology as a job, as a career, that at that time it was clear that there was a future in solar electricity. That was in 2001 when I first started at Rain Shadow. Uh, we had, uh, back then it was primarily off-grid systems, so battery-based systems for outer islands like Stewart Island and Sinclair and Cypress and Waldron. Uh, people out there, if they want electricity, they're either running a generator or they're charging batteries and often with solar electric systems. Uh, that ended up leading to me getting into international projects. I started my own company in 2008 to focus on projects outside of San Juan County and I got into supplying equipment in uh, the Caribbean uh, down in St. Kitts and then a later with a project on a vocational school in Guinea-Bissau, West Africa. And um, so I've been supplying solar electric equipment now for other projects that led to getting involved with smaller scale systems, but systems that power schools and clinics in Tanzania and Kenya. And then I started getting into more independent consulting projects in Asia, in Myanmar, uh, doing projects for villages in uh, all over that country. And then COVID hit, and I'm grounded back here on the island and uh, getting back into doing some local work, outer island projects, working with homeowners that want to install their own systems and uh, started teaming up with a new outfit, some, a guy in Bellingham and a few guys in Arizona and a guy in Minnesota, and we're all teaming up to put together a new, new company to supply off-grid system packages and whole system kits for uh, the same type of applications, you know, remote homes and cabins, as well as rural international projects for more like uh, institutions like schools and clinics and offices those kinds of things anyway it's been a fascinating experience to start here on the island and go all around the world and end up back here on the island uh, I've always enjoyed the quiet rural lifestyle and I think now I, if I can support people to live in rural areas and have modern conveniences like electric lights and computers and phone charging uh, that I uh, that's, that's kind of my mission and I'm in, I'm loving it okay thanks Ashley Daniels Morado and I am Orcas Island High School alumni class of 1998. I am here to talk to you about the United States Navy and um, being a paralegal. 
I joined the Navy in 2003 and I was first an aviation electrician's mate and then I converted to legal men, which is a paralegal. Um, as an aviation electrician's mate, I worked on the S3 Viking and that decommissioned and um, I did work on the flight deck and on shore and that was very fun and dirty, but I do love airplanes, so I enjoyed that. Um, they wanted me to start working on helicopters, which frightened me terribly, so I said no. And that's when I converted and um, went to Naval Justice School in Newport, Rhode Island. And then I was assigned to the USS Ronald Reagan, and I served there until 2010. I then was um, transferred to Naval Special Warfare Group 1, where I worked um, for the West Coast Navy SEALs. Um, after that, I did get out of the Navy and I worked as a civil paralegal and I've worked for attorneys doing wills, trusts, estates, and I've worked in um, civil domestic with divorce um, and custody and a little bit of DSS work. I have recently um, taken a position um, as a federal employee working for the JAG Corps again and that is in the criminal sector. Um, being in the Navy was one of the most rewarding things I have ever done and traveling for free and receiving the GI Bill has been very beneficial and it did um, assist me in getting my degree. Uh, I will be going back and getting my master's very soon and I do recommend that to anybody. Um, uh, traveling for free has been wonderful and I really enjoyed it and I recommend that to anybody. So um, I, I highly recommend the military to anyone. I, choose your rate, choose your fate is very popular. You definitely think wisely about your job decisions. If you like the law, there are many avenues to become a JAG officer through the legal men rating. Um, and if you'd like to contact me and that's possible through this program, I would be happy to answer questions about being a paralegal through the military or civil and the education that you need to do that and the long hours, but the rewarding work. Um, thank you and good luck. Um, go Vikings. Hello, Orcas Island High School students. I'm Mandy Randolph, and I'm a graduate of the class of 1995, 26 years ago, Orcas Island High School. I was a senior, and I was in the same place as you, and it was actually pretty similar to what it is now, except for we didn't have the internet, and we didn't have smartphones, and yeah, so it wasn't the same at all. You guys have it way different. When it came to figuring out what I wanted to do with my life, I just really kind of had to look around, look at what I knew, and see if anything felt like it would be a good fit. And I liked school, so I figured I'd be a teacher. And I decided that pretty early on, maybe at like 15. So by the time I was a senior, I did my senior project around teaching elementary students. And when I applied for colleges, I just uh, thought, well, I want to go to a college where I can learn to be a good teacher, and actually I wanted to be in the Greek system too. So I chose the University of Washington, and I entered there and started in their freshman interest group for elementary school teachers, and I just stayed on that track, um, except for I got pregnant halfway through college, and that was a little bit of a detour. So if I give you some advice, I'd say... Um, try not to have a baby when you're in college. It really is um, difficult. <laughs> uh, but I ended up transferring to Western Washington University because the internet came along and I found out that's actually the best place to get a teaching certificate. And I wanted to get out of the city anyway. So off to Bellingham, I went and I graduated finally in 2003 with um, the teaching degree for elementary education. And I came back to Orcas Island and I got a job. 
and it has been a really awesome experience teaching on Orcus. I have had the opportunity to teach a lot of different subjects. In fact, some of you were my students. Probably um, if you went to elementary school, you definitely had me um, for farm to classroom. But if you're a senior right now, I was actually your kindergarten teacher. And if you were here, that was really fun. And I'm really proud of you guys. So, but the reality is I also have another career now. So... I am Miss Mandy for part of the year, or part of the day, and I am Mandy Randolph, a real estate broker for the rest of my time. And I love real estate. And I um, I didn't know it. I had no idea that I would love helping people buy and sell their homes because I always wanted to be a teacher. And it wasn't until I actually slowed down focused on what was actually really satisfying to me, and that's helping people. So I took a 90-hour course, and I got my real estate license. That's not where my real estate education came in. It was definitely finding a good mentor, and getting into the business was really challenging at first. I've been really successful now, and I love it. Um, so... What would I tell you? I think that what I would want you to consider is to not plan your life too much. You really don't know what's happening out there until you're out there in it. And maybe you guys more than me because you actually have the internet now and smartphones. Um, but you don't know. You shouldn't plan your life too much. You should kind of figure out what you're passionate about. Try things. When you meet people that are living life large and they love life, ask them, like, what do you do? Why do you like this? Why are you, why are you so happy? Um, and I think that as long as you're driven and you want to be, um, it's not successful, happy in life, uh, you'll figure out how to get to your goals. And it might be totally different than you think right now as you're sitting in a classroom or at home, I don't know, COVID. Uh, so so just, I guess, I challenge you to don't plan it out. Your parents are going to kill me for saying that, but don't plan it out. Just be ready for opportunities. Be ready to follow your passions. Be ready to figure out if you want to try something different. And it's okay. I mean, I literally spent six years in college to be a teacher, and now I teach two days a week. And I spent 90 hours learning to be a real estate agent. And I do it all the time and I love it. So I couldn't see that coming. I really couldn't have planned for that. And I just encourage you to keep your eyes open, keep your opportunities open and see, see what comes your way. Enjoy your lives. It's good. Life is good. I feel bad.